It's a finally Friday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Welcome back, everyone. This is the final Weather for Weather Geeks until after Christmas. I'll be off from this weekend through Christmas Day. I'll be back on the 26th, so I wish you and yours happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Hope uh, you have an enjoyable holiday period, and uh, the weather should certainly be a little interesting again as we head towards uh, Christmas, and we'll talk a little bit about the Christmas forecast coming up towards the end of this video. First, it was the coldest morning of the season so far this morning. These are approximate lows. I grabbed the temperatures from 4 a.m. That's when most places kind of bottomed out, about uh, 8, 10 degrees in a lot of places, 5 Berlin Center, even 2 in Mespo. Someone, someone uh, sent us a picture this morning of their thermometer somewhere in Trumbull County, I believe, showed 1 degree. Uh, so it was, it was darn cold out there. We had a thin blanket of clouds for a lot of the night. If not for that blanket of clouds, we probably would have been even colder. Now, the big story this afternoon was the uh, snow shower activity that we've been telling you about and we even had some heavier squalls mixed in here so it was a classic case of actual accumulations being fairly insignificant but impacts being high rush hour snow squalls december traffic on a friday evening that's a recipe for some issues so a roll of time lapse here starting at 3 p.m in niles and we're going to see conditions deteriorate as we go towards sunset and the uh, snow really starts uh, kicking in here there we go, and just like that, boom, you get a quick uh, half an inch, quarter of an inch even, worth the snow, and it really makes the parking lot slick, the roadways slick as well, and of course, uh, probably had a fair amount of accidents, unfortunately, uh, around the region right at rush hour early this evening. Let me stop the loop here. Uh, I'll show you uh, the squalls as they came through, the timing on this. Uh, they came through kind of the heart of our viewing area right around 5 to 5.30 to 6. So at 5.20, uh, it was snowing hard from Vienna back through Austin Town, Ellsworth, Berlin, into the Alliance area as well. Some fingers of moderate snow down in Columbiana County and even over into Mercer County as well. By 5.40 this evening, it was snowing hard in Boardman and in Poland and in Canfield and heading up towards uh, Hubbard and... Hermitage and Sharon as well. Mercer, Grove City got in on the act by about 6 o'clock. And then all of this pushed east. And from here on out tonight, we're not looking... Uh, pardon me. We're not looking at much more than a couple of flurries. Also had some wintry weather mischief along the east coast today with uh, some uh, impactful snow, uh, disruptive snow in uh, Philly and up towards Trenton and New York City and uh, just skirting southern New England this evening as well. Winter weather advisories are up for Ashtabula County, Crawford County, PA, not because of tonight's uh, squalls, but the lake effect that's going to start kicking in later on tonight and into tomorrow, and it turns into a lake effect snow warning once you're up into Erie County, Cattaraugus, Chautauqua counties in southwestern New York. They're going to get a bunch of snow up there. All right, for us, again, not much more than flurries for the next several hours. As we go towards daybreak tomorrow, I'm going to see a band of light snow try to set up across the region. Now, this model might not have it placed exactly right. Uh, I suspect we'll probably get at least a little bit of snow farther south than it's showing here. Uh, but nonetheless, as we get into the midday and into the afternoon hours, this is going to just kind of hang out, it looks like. Mostly north of I-80, the farther south you are, the better shape you'll be in tomorrow. But north of I-80, we might see some light snow lingering for a good chunk of the daylight hours tomorrow. It's not going to add up real quickly. It's not going to be the kind of heavy burst of snow that we had today. But uh, it could uh, add up a little bit. I'll show you the map in just a second. Here's a look at hour-by-hour -hour snow chances for as an average across our viewing area. Over the uh, next 12 hours, they, they really ramp up again as we go towards daybreak. Uh, tomorrow morning. So uh, as far as uh, accumulations go, now aside from the band I just showed you, there's also going to be a finger of pretty heavy lake effect late tonight and especially tomorrow and even into tomorrow evening aimed it, it kind of have a westerly fetch across the lake. So this is really going to be aimed at Erie and parts of Ashtabula County and then heading up into southwestern New York as well. And as you can see by the legend, some places could see half a foot or so up there. Now closer to home, uh, I think uh, with that band just sort of hanging out for a while tomorrow, we could see a couple inches. Uh, Kinsman, maybe, maybe as far south as Cortland and Sharon, but more likely off to the north towards Route 87 and then over towards Greenville, Mercer, Sandy Lake. And in the far northeastern corner of Mercer County, I can't even rule out someone trying to get three or four inches worth of snow. But for most of us, this will be an inch or less. Uh, tomorrow and especially in the morning again not looking for much snow tomorrow afternoon in Mahoning and Columbiana counties now this boundary is uh, going to kind of hang out for a couple of days then but the atmosphere will slowly warm 
In fact, it'll be warm enough that even though the model doesn't show much here, I'm not sure it's showing enough. I think we'll probably have a little more moisture than it's showing here Sunday evening. I, I would expect there to be a little rain Sunday evening and maybe some wet snowflakes trying to mix in as well. And kind of a murky looking Monday coming up, I suspect, with a lot of clouds around and maybe a touch of rain and some drizzle as well. All right, looking ahead to the next 10 days and day 10 is indeed Christmas Day. It's going to be fairly mild next week. I've got a, a 45 in the forecast for high Tuesday. I've got a 47 next Friday as we get set for Christmas weekend. But Christmas Day on Monday should be a colder day. Now, we're not expecting a super cold Christmas. Our average high by Christmas Day is about 34. We may have a high closer to freezing or maybe even upper 20s for Christmas Day. So not as cold as the air mass we've been dealing with over the last couple of days, but colder than it'll be late in the uh, week. Let's see if my head will be in the way for this graphic. All right, did some uh, stats for uh, white Christmases. Most of the time we define a, a white Christmas as having an inch of snow on the ground. Uh, but in almost seven out of every 10 Christmases, uh, we have at least a trace of snow. In other words, a little bit of snow flying around, maybe not much more than flurries. But in seven out of 10, uh, Christmases, to, uh, we, we, we see at least a few snowflakes in the air. Now, measurable snow, more than just a trace, uh, up to, you know, a tenth of an inch, a half an inch or more, uh, that occurs in roughly one out of every three or four uh, Christmases. No, that's not right. <laughs> uh, 30 to 40 percent, so roughly one out of every, yeah, three, uh, not one out of every four, one out of every three, uh, Christmases have some measurable snowfall. Now, as far as Christmases with one inch of snow on the ground, which we usually think of as a white Christmas, in Youngstown, with the records going back to 1934, uh, that occurs in about 46% of our Christmases. So that's our that's kind of our baseline average. We, as a climate, uh, for, climatologically speaking, we have about a 46% chance of having a white Christmas, meaning one inch of snow on the uh, on the ground. All right, our snowiest Christmas since at least 1934. Again, my, my good snow records go back to 1934. Uh, back in 2002, 15 years ago, 15 year anniversary of that this year, if, uh, if you remember that one, I, I do. 5.4 inches of snow during uh, Christmas day back in 2002. The deepest snowpack uh, was in 1995. There was, there was 10 inches of snow on the ground on Christmas day back in 1995. All right, what are our, what are our chances of a, a white Christmas this year? I put our chances right at average, pretty much. Our historical odds are about 46%, and I'm uh, shooting for 45% right now. I'm kind of hedging my bets, and I'm going to show you why here. Uh, quite a bit of uncertainty when it comes to the forecast for uh, Christmas. I think with the mild air we're going to have next week, we're going to see some melting of our snowpack. We've got four to six inches of snow sitting on the ground. That's going to diminish some by the end of next week. The question will be, do we still have an inch left on the ground, or will we pick up any accumulating snow before Christmas? And that's a big question mark right now. Let's take a look at some of the modeling, and I'm going to show you a couple of what we call deterministic models here. I don't like showing deterministic models necessarily uh, for 10 days out because, you know, this is just one run of one model. We like to look at ensemble models that far out. Uh, but I'm going to show you a couple anyway just to show you what's, what our major long or medium range models are showing uh, right now. So here's a look at the European model for late next week. Uh, we're looking at the whole U.S. here. This is next Friday the 22nd, showing a low pressure system across parts of the Great Lakes region, cold front through here, and this would mean a breezy, mild day for us and some uh, probably some rain showers around. For Saturday the 23rd, that front gets well to our east and we're probably dry according to this model. Now, we have increasing confidence of some uh, real winter weather mischief just before and perhaps during Christmas in the deep south. So this looks like snow and ice for parts of Texas, parts of the lower Mississippi Valley as well. Uh, that would be on Saturday the 23rd. Uh, back here at home then on the 24th, Christmas Eve. Again, wintry weather mischief down here. And for us, it would depend on where this front decides to lay out. Right now, if you took this model literally, we would be on the dry side of it, but it wouldn't have to wiggle far to the north to get in on some of that moisture. And that could be any type of precipitation, really. Again, if this model were to be exactly right, which is unlikely, but this is the idea it has right now. Then on Christmas Day, this is Christmas morning on the European model. If this were exactly right, 
this would that front would be just to our east again and we would probably have some moisture coming up and over the front meaning there could be some light precipitation perhaps some light snow or flurries for christmas morning so that's the european model latest run let's just show you the gfs and i'll skip ahead to friday kind of a similar idea to the european on friday pardon me with a front coming through our area probably some rain showers on friday the uh, differences between this and the European start showing up on Saturday the 23rd. Uh, it doesn't push the front as far east, and this would suggest that we would have at least a small chance for some snow or flurries on Saturday the 23rd. And look at all that uh, ugly weather in Texas and the deep south, snow and ice. Ugh. Dallas could have real problems next weekend. Uh, and then on Christmas Eve the 24th, more problems in the deep south in Texas and Arkansas maybe, and the front just to our south and east um, could... If this were to be exactly right, could start to bring some moisture back our way. Maybe Christmas Eve night and then Christmas Day, it has the front pushing back to the south. So the bottom line is, the lesson I want you to take away from me showing you all this is, there's likely to be a front somewhere in here. The weekend, of Christmas, the weekend just before Christmas and Christmas Day. It's somewhere in that red zone I just drew. Don't know where. In it's almost impossible to say exactly where, but wherever that front is in the vicinity, there's going to be a chance for rain, snow, ice, all three, and maybe 50 miles north of the front, it's partly sunny and dry. So we have our work cut out for us with the Christmas forecast. Uh, I've been advertising all week when I've been talking about Christmas, how there's going to be a battle zone between warmth and cold. Where's it going to be? We just don't know at this point, but uh, it, it'll make for an interesting forecast in the run-up to Christmas. All right, have a great weekend, everyone. A great week next week. I'll, uh, I'll be chiming in on social media from time to time during my vacation uh, if the weather gets interesting enough. Otherwise, yeah, last edition of Weather for Weather Geeks until the 26th. Merry Christmas, everyone.